they do not service hot shots. While he's doing that and dealing with that, I'm dealing with this. Everywhere right now in trucking is getting hit. Shit happens out here, man. So it's one of those mornings. Um, I parked behind this heavy haul guy last night. And I parked right over here, like in front of the loves. Like, I'm in front of the loves body shop or the not body shop, but their, you know, their construction. Not, not. I, I parked in front of the loves mechanic shop, but they, you know, they could still get, you know, trucks in there. I'm not blocking nobody or, you know, or impeding nobody's, you know, area. This heavy haul guy. Um, trying he just wait <laughs> he's um he's parked right there and then i got this guy who came in last night i heard him come in last night i was like man i don't give a f but i'm thinking that he's gonna be the type of guy to wake up in the morning and move no this guy has not moved yet i went and knocked on his door he didn't come to his door so i'm like what the f like you you look, look you blocked me in i can't even get out i can't get out man so Sometimes I just get tired of things like that, man. People just do stuff like that, like it doesn't make any sense. Like, if you come in late at night, don't you think the person in the, in, uh, like who you're blocking in, is gonna wanna leave? Like, do you stop to consider that? Some people though, some people will actually pull up to you, and they see you in the truck, they'll knock on the door and be like, hey man, uh, what time are you leaving out? And you'll tell them the time, and they'll be like, okay, I'll move for you at that time. Or some people have come, so I, I've seen it before, some people write something on a little piece of paper and put it in your door and be like, just wake me up when you ready to go. Not this guy. Get these Jake breaks on him right quick and see if that wakes his ass up. Now, to make these even worse, <laughs> somebody's pulled in and he decided, oh, let me just swing on right next to this guy <laughs> and not move. So he parked right there and now I'm double parked in, blocked in by these two individuals in his heavy haul. So I think, I just saw the heavy haul get out of his trunk. Hey, but yeah, let's get this dude, um, let's, 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 let's try to get this situated. I know it's good time anyway. Let me go take my man's up. You gotta use Russian, right? You gotta use Russian, right? Yes, you do. Oh my God, he just sneezed in my face, man. Watch out, watch out. Now what I'm about to show you guys <laughs> is something special. It's nothing to brag. This is really something to really teach you guys on how to really make it out here, especially if you got a flatbed or a step deck or whatever, what have you. Utilizing your truck 100%, right? I ain't no teacher, I ain't nothing like that, but you know, I think I have enough skin of the game to be able to understand what you gotta do out here to make it what you make it. Now behind me, what you're probably seeing is one big fat load. That's what it looks like to you guys. But the guys who know me from the hot shot world know me and know my dad. That's the partial kings. Now, if you don't know what a partial is, a partial is basically a smaller loader that does not take up your whole trailer. Basically LTL, don't take up your whole trailer, and they're, they're gonna pay you by partial. So now in these current markets, you got loads that are one pick, one drop, your full truck loads, averaging about 250 a mile. Some of them are less than that. But let's say our average is 250 a mile. Let's say our average is two dollars a mile. That's what you're getting for one pick, one drop to go a thousand miles. So for a thousand miles nowadays, they're giving you two thousand dollars. It used to be around four thousand dollars. Then it started going down and stuff like that. So this is what you get. All right. Now I know a lot of y'all. All right, tell it. All right, Benny, tell us the good stuff. How much is it paying? What is it? So, for 1,400 miles, I had to deadhead 280 miles to get both of these loads together, okay? So, 1,400 miles in total, I gotta go from here all the way up to where my next destination is. This is 1,400 miles in total, and then I think every drop is like maybe, a, maybe an hour or two away from each other. I had to drive 280 miles to deadhead to get these loads. This entire trailer, 
1,400 miles, this entire trailer is paying $7,050. That's what it is. All right? $7,050 for one way. Now, of course, you got to drop off when you get there to your three different locations, like a UPS driver. But for one way, one destination, and one location you're going to, you're taking $7,000. Instead of you taking for 1,400 miles, $2,500. Now, I'm not saying that this always works. So sometimes you can get lucky because first is this week. Technically, I only dropped off 3,000 this week, but I'm starting my Monday off next week, dropping off 7,050 bucks. That's the difference. It's not always going to work out like this. You don't get lucky like this. Like, for instance, let me show you. This load barely fit. By, I had to move, we had to move this load backwards in order to get this to fit. Look how much space is in between that. Look at that. Look how much space is in between that. Look how much space is in between that. You see that? And then I was smart enough when I picked up this load. I picked up the, the two green pieces. They are one load. I picked those up together. I said, let me go and put this one on top. But this one got the overhang just in case this one, you know, can have enough room to breathe. You see what I'm saying? You got to be, a, you got your driver has to be smart enough to be able to put the loads where they need to go. When I picked this load up, I already had an idea. It's only 14,000 pounds. Let me put it in the back of the trailer and tarp it and let that sit back there and take up the back of the trailer. One load is paying for fuel and the other two loads are the money makers. And... You got to do it like that sometimes now, man, because you got to fight back. And truth be told, fighting back, we're, we're, we're at a loss arguing about, oh, people are taking cheap freight. Oh, people are doing this. When you got companies out there with 100 trucks, 200 trucks, and they don't have customers like Warner or Walmart or whoever, what do you think they're doing? The guys like me and you, we just got to take the scraps. So if you don't got no direct shipper, if you don't got no contract, if you're not connected with military, if you're not connected with the port, even right now, the ports in the military both are not as paying as good as they used to. Everywhere right now in trucking is getting hit. Everywhere. So what you gonna do? A lot of guys out there saying they're gonna park their truck. You gonna park your truck? Some people can't just park their truck. I can't park my truck. It's my only source of income. You know, that's my biggest problem. You know, I ain't got like five or six different incomes. Of course I got social media, I got Instagram, I got YouTube. I make money off of that too, I ain't gonna lie. You know, I got partnerships with certain people like DAT and stuff like that. I ain't gonna lie. The main source of income comes from trucking. My grandma today, I love her to death. She asked me for some money today because she had to go take care of some eye stuff today. I had no problem giving it to her, that's my grandma. But this, she, she eats off of this through this. So some people can't just take off and just sit their truck down and go work around. And some people don't want to do that. If you look, look at, look at the truck I got, y'all. I'm not trying to plead my argument here, but look at the truck I got. I do this because I love the truck. I love trucking. I love it. So you gotta, you gotta work like this. This is the best way to work. And I ain't gonna lie, it took a lot of work. It took two days to do this. A day and a half, really. A day and a half. It took a day and a half to really do this. But now I can drive all weekend, drop off Monday, and drop off all my loads Monday, and pick something else up Tuesday, drop off by Wednesday. I'm gonna have a great week next week, hopefully. I'm not bragging, I'm just saying, this is, this, this, that's really ain't shit, to be honest with you. Every load should be paying $3 a mile. I should be getting like 9000 for these three loads to go. Every load should be paying $3 a mile. I'm not bragging because there's this nothing to brag about when you got to do this. This ain't bragging. This is what I got to do to make money. This ain't bragging. This is what I got to do to drop off money. This ain't bragging. I'm just showing you the real out here. This is real. This is, what it's going, this is what's really happening. This is, this is what trucking has come to. Look how hard you got to work to make some couple dollars. Then I got to spend money on fuel. You know what I mean? It's, I'm not bragging. I hate when folks say you people, what am I bragging about? I'm bragging about making $7,000 for 1,400 miles with three different loads? That's bragging to you? That ain't bragging. That ain't bragging. We all hurting. I'm hurting the guy. Damn, I'm hurting. I'm hurting. We all hurting out here. I'm hurting. Some people are hurting worse than others. I'm hurting. I'll tell you the truth. But uh, like I said, uh, that's what I got to do, man. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to hit the road. So, yeah, I'm not bragging. But there ain't nothing to brag about. That's just real. Let's get down the road now. Yeah, well, it's not gonna happen today. I wish I could make it. I, I honestly didn't see the Friday. I don't even remember having a conversation about Friday. It's not gonna be there Friday, that's for sure. Can we do Monday then at 8 a.m.? Nope, we could do Monday, like midday. Shit happens out here, man. I know they were there today at 
nine. Can we squeeze you in a little bit early, man? Nine, maybe nine thirty. I don't like guarantee or promising people because I know I didn't promise you Friday. That's why I'm so adamant about it. I don't like guaranteed stuff, and I like to oh, I like to give you a number and overachieve it. So I might say eleven, but I might actually be there like between eight and nine. Oh, I mean, I, mean, I get that. And, but but it's stuff, stuff happens, traffic, weather. Uh, driving me to reset for two days. Stuff happens. Yeah, so, like, did, was he planning to get there Friday, but then he just, like, did I, 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 mean, I, heard, I, know, I, I booked the load with you. I don't even remember con- a Friday conversation. I really don't. And I don't, I don't get the Raycon. The Raycon goes through my assistant. Okay, but then the Raycon gets to your driver? I mean, does he see that? Yeah, but he knows what he can drive also. He knows I'm not going to book my little picket on Wednesday, deliver Friday. Unless he's paying like five, six dollars a mile. Oh. All right. Well, so okay, Monday at ten a.m. That work? Sure, that works. All right. I'll reach back out to him and let him know. Yes. Tell him I'm, I apologize, yeah. but I'm sure it's not that important. They don't have workers there waiting to receive it. If they were, they'd have paid more money. Dude, what do you mean it's not that important? You're the one that screwed up, and then you're just gonna like. I mean, no, 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 you. Of, 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 I really believe you screwed up. I think you wanted somebody to move that load so bad. We never discussed when it should be delivered on no Friday. I'm the one that screwed up. I believe, yeah, I'm 100 percent you. Oh, I screwed up. So I clearly communicated you on the phone. No, you did, you did not. not. Friday delivery. Sent you a Raycon. Friday delivery. Oh, I I didn't hear that conversation. Oh, I did I not check the Raycon. I don't look. How I did I screw up, dude? This, 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 this is this is really the first time you gave somebody a loan and there was a miscommunication between when it should be delivered. I know this is not okay. That's fine. If if there was the first time it's a miscommunication, then how did I make the mistake? Why are you blame, putting the blame on me? Because and you, made you did not tell me Friday. I, dude, I promise I told you Friday. No, you no, did it's not. Literally, it's sitting on my board. I would have told you it's no, that, but I got the money you paid. You ain't paying that that much that much of money. That much money. I'll tell you how look, Keep your load. Dude, we never had. Oh my god. All right. I'm honestly just not having this fight. If you can do I'm Monday. Not at, we have a discussion. We're not fighting. Well, but dude, I know I communicated Friday, and if you're just gonna like continue to deny, I have my calls recorded. If I want to really take the time, I could, but it's just like. You need to prove me wrong on this one because I don't remember having no further conversation. Not for the not for the not for the money you paid. All right, man. It, it's really whatever. If I wanted to, I could. I just don't even really have the time to keep doing this right now. So you can be there Monday at 10 a.m. That's doable. That's doable. Anything changes? I'll gonna... call you know. Because there's gonna be a guy. His name is Jim. He might even be on your paperwork too. I mean, that looks I'll, I'll call Jim and negotiate with Jim when we're gonna be there for sure, for sure. Can you do that actually right now? Absolutely, I could do that for you. Is he fucking man? I know he is. No, I know. I know. We don't even need to fight about this. It's not gonna get there today. It's gonna get there Monday. Jim gonna be just fine. So let's not argue about this. Let's not even have another discussion. But it's gonna be okay. I got you back. But next time I do a loan with you, let's make sure we know what they were supposed to deliver. And I really didn't know it was right. All right, well, there might have been a miscommunication at some point. It, it really I don't, is. Where it came up. I don't like disappointing brokers because if I disappoint you and you're mad at me, you ain't going to give me a loan next week or next month. So it, I don't do that. I don't really go to my way to, you know, bullshit anybody with loans. I, I get it done. That's what we do. But I really didn't know it was supposed to deliver no Friday. Otherwise, I'll tell you, keep the alone. It's not paying enough. I'm not starving out here. I got I got six trucks. I'm not starving. Yeah, no, I, okay. Can you actually give this guy a call? It's gonna be really pretty much the same. I will. What's the same site. You got his number handy? No. I need to go check the radio. I got it right now with you. That's all I do is partials. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's the way you do it. Big, it's just like that. Yeah, big loans just don't pay. They just don't. And I like you, so I'm gonna call you next week. Hopefully, you have another load in the same area. And this time, we're gonna be on the same page, and I'll make sure you get it on time. Even if you ever get stuff, you ever get stuff in Cincy, Cincinnati? Yeah, yeah, all the time. I got six trucks, man. I'm all over. I let my dad talk to this dude, but while he's doing that and dealing with that, I'm dealing with this. Um, literally made it right in front of a cat. Um, 
the service area. That's what I was actually sleeping over there at the Flying J. Yesterday I felt a little stutter in my truck one time. I already knew, okay, I need new fuel filters. I've been trying to kind of estimate how far I can push the truck. You know, some people say you can drive these trucks, I guess the newer trucks, 30,000 miles. Um, but I, I try to push this truck to 15,000 miles. And we don't usually go 15,000 miles. And I only was able to get like 14,000 miles up out of it before the fuel filter decided, oh, we don't want to be here no more. You know what I mean? So I'm right here in front of this cat service area. Thank God. I made it over here. I limped over here. Had to start the truck three times just to get it over here. They said they're not going to be able to t take me till noon. So I'm going to just sit here in the cold until noon. Hopefully I got a little bit of heat in here still. Bundled up with a dog. And they're going to change my fuel filters. And now I know 10,000 miles. We're not going past 10,000 miles no more. That's it. 10,000. Switch her up. I call this towing and repair company called Flint Hills. They said that they have a truck actually right across the street at the Flying J doing a service call right now. And she'll send him over here to check on me and just to see what I need. Um, what I did not know is this is the same situation I was in when I was up in Wisconsin. Which the truck, which I know I didn't get too much footage about that. See, so I really don't know. But if you check my Instagram, you would know. Um, the truck, last night it was... It was, uh, they said last night it was 13 degrees, but the wind, the wind chills made it feel like negative one. So, um, that was the issue last night. So she said, it may not even be your fuel filters. It may, I mean, of course I might need to change it now, but she said it may just need the truck needs to be warmed up again. So they might have to tell you into a shop. I said, what? I got to go through the same thing over again. So I think last night when I stopped, um, I should have just hurried up and got the hell up out of here because I knew there was a storm coming. The storm hasn't brewed in yet, but I guess the the, the, the cold is here. And my boy is feeling it right now. You feeling it? I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. And um, I should have just hired to tell it up out of here. Kept the truck running, kept her warm. But, you know, we stopped last night. As soon as I, I, I got up this morning and put fuel in her, she just... And I think that's probably what it was, too. I filled the truck up all the way. What I should have was just fill the truck up halfway. There's certain things you got to do when you're out here. I know. Hold on. There's certain things you got to do when you're out here, man. You can't fill the, you can't fill your fill tanks all the way up. I think half full is the way to go. I already took you out, bro. There's nothing else that you want. You probably just want to eat, but you got to chill. We eat later. You know how we do it. Come on now. Chill. So, um... It's just a waiting game right now, man. I just got to wait for somebody to check it out, see what they think. I'm going to throw some socks on because it is getting a little chilly in here. I was thinking maybe I can run the truck right quick. And maybe she'll she'll she'll, she'll stay running. Because um, she was idling all night. So I don't know why she wouldn't run now. You know what I mean? But. Let's get a little bit of heat, right? So, right. Watch out, Kanan. Make sure the truck down in gear. It sucks. Uh -huh. All right, we are here back at Speedco. Let's see how it's gonna go down today. Like I said, though, when I when I showed you guys that the truck was, it wasn't really broke down. Um, the oil filters got clogged up, so now we're here at Speedco over here, and um, we are in. Are we in PA? The we cross already to we're in pa going into new york so we're about like 80 miles outside of albany new york we're getting an oil change right now they're not changing the fuel filter they're just going to do the oil filters and the fuel chain the oil the oil filters and the oil change um not everybody is bad not every loves is bad let me say that like i said the loves that i've encountered i think what's going on right now um even he just told me they have so many rules and regulations they have to go by now that it's kind of hard to keep employees i talked to the guy he's the manager right here he has about three or four guys underneath him right now and i went to two other loves prior to this and they both didn't have anybody to do the oil change for me that was actually on staff it was either one or two guys working there and then supposedly they couldn't do the oil change one was on an on-site call a roadside call and the other one was in the shop he said i can't do oil change for you today because he didn't have the i guess the qualification to do it and then you had the other shop that just had one guy working there and he ain't had nobody to do it either so not all loves are black not all loves are bad i just think it's hard to be able to maintain or to to, to retain or keep or secure employees because of everything that's going on in the economy right now and also everything that's going on with them i think they have so many things you have to go by they said that at least he told me that there's so many rules that you have to go by now that it's just it's just like no point of really you know working here almost in a sense that's what he said i'm not i'm, I'm just saying i'm you know i'm not gonna discuss which loves i'm at but that's what he said. A lot of times I feel like Love's got, they don't have any mechanics. I think they got guys who just slap on parts. And I 
that could have just been my experience that I've had, but y'all y'all comment in the comment section and tell me how y'all feel about it. I mean, hopefully people get oil change. There's been plenty of times I have to actually go in there and tell them what to change or not to leave that patch of oil sitting in there in that little hidden compartment at the bottom. You gotta take that oil out too. You know, they put a fucking uh, drive tire on my steer tire. So I've had a lot of, you know, previous experiences with them, but I think this one's gonna go pretty well. I think these guys are good. now so the good thing about loves is though for everybody who people who don't know um they will take care of any semi truck any of the big boy the heavy duty commercial vehicles they will take care of you tires repair oil change electrical stuff like that but unfortunately for the guys who follow me from the beginning if you're a hot shot i've told you guys this before they do not service hot shots they don't service those light duty trucks they serve as the heavy duty trucks light heavy light duty trucks are the pickup trucks i think box trucks stuff like that they're not gonna sprint vans are not gonna bring you guys in here and take care of you guys they're all heavy duty i don't know why it's like that it's just like that but if you come into loves that's what it's gonna be like man now on the bright side i can't really speak too much about this but i know a loves truck has came and helped me a couple times in the hot shot i think once not even a couple just once but they do have roadside assistance. So if you need anything on the road, you broke down, you're not at a truck stop, you broke down, you need your tire fixed or whatever fixed, Loves will definitely come help you with that. Um, I think they do kind of charge though, unfortunately, but I mean, at least you know that they got it. They do got roadside assistance. It's, it's a big help to the community, to the industry, but at the same time, if you don't got employees, business can't be good. So, you know, I've been to several speed codes already and it just, my experience has been like, oh, come on, man. You know, my dad has he's had a bad experience too it's like come on man you know what i mean got a sheriff out here sheriff one she sheriff saw me he was like man what you doing out here boy <laughs> watch one of my old videos well it's not old it's probably like a couple couple weeks old but yeah we finally stopped we we're about an hour an hour and 35 minutes away the first load that drops off and then the second load that comes off is the truck bed which is probably i think it's i think it's about 40 minutes away from the first drop and then the last drop is these two green pieces that drops off in maine that's about two hours up the road so i should be able to drop everything off tomorrow especially with this have this has an eight o'clock appointment so i'm gonna be dropping this off at eight o'clock in the morning and then that one will be dropped off later on, probably around, let's say, 11. And then these two pieces will probably drop around in the afternoon. And I'll be done with my Monday drop-offs. And then Tuesday, I'm picking up a load. It hasn't fully went through yet because we haven't gotten the Raycon just yet. But Tuesday, I'm supposed to be picking up a load that drops off the next day in Michigan. So then I'm about to take my behind and drive all the way back to Michigan and drop off in Michigan. And then that'll be a next day delivery for Wednesday. So the week, we already got the week set up. Like I said, we're dropping off 7,000. Then we got hopefully another 26 picking up. Drop that off by Wednesday. Then hopefully Wednesday we can pick something up. I know I'm gonna drop that off early in the morning. Hopefully Wednesday we can pick something up. That way we can drop off by Friday to finish the week off strong with a 10 plus week. Like I said, last week was a horrible week. Only dropped off 3,000. This week could be a 10 plus week if I play my cards right. Broker, the broker was upset about this load, even though the broker was playing with this load. So I know a lot of people, you know, had a lot of mixed opinions on Instagram because I posted this on Instagram, the conversation that we had or the conversation that my dad had with the broker. And a lot of people felt like, oh, you guys read the Raycon, you guys should know better. But it's like you guys or a lot of people want to side with the broker in certain situations. But I'm like, brokers play so many games. When are you allowed to do certain things for your benefit? When are you allowed to take certain things into your hands? I always tell people, if you play by the broker's rules, you'll lose. Now, that's not to say for a lot of brokers. There's a lot of good brokers out there. Do not get me wrong. There's a lot of good guys out there. But then it's like the same thing with po police brutality. There's a lot of good police officers out there. But then the bad guys, the bad apples make the whole thing look bad. You know what I mean? So you got a, you got a few good brokers out there. But then you got a couple bad apples that make the whole thing look bad. And it's just something that you don't want to deal with. You know what I mean? So for the broker to actually come conversate with my father i'm gonna tell you guys a little bit more about it since we already watched the video but i'm just gonna you know kind of just do a little outro here 
for everything that happened in that in that conversation, the broker booked the load with my dad. Now my dad has an assistant, which is my girlfriend, who's back at home. And the broker booked the load, never spoke nothing about Friday drop off, never spoke nothing about that. Okay, it's 1400 miles. I picked the load up around like four or five o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so it's 1400 miles. I picked the load up late that night because I remember I left at night after I got tarped because they didn't even want to help me with the tarp. It was freezing out there, it was cold, it was windy, so it was hard to tarp it up. It took me like three hours to tarp this thing up. So I left at night. You can't expect the driver after you already know the situation to drive 1400 miles. Never spoke about it, but put it on the Raycon. He made sure he put it on the Raycon. The day Friday comes, no, we have no call from the broker. Usually when there's an appointment to drop off a load, a broker will be in contact with you the very next day, that day again, that day again, and then the day of the delivery. The broker didn't wait until maybe an hour before eight o'clock on Friday to say, are you guys dropping off at 8 a.m. today? There was no discussion to drop off a partial at 8 a.m. two days later. There was no discussion of that. There was never any discussion of that. But he made sure to put it on the Raycon. So I'm expecting that this broker may take some money away because that's usually what they do. And it's not like they're being really... I'm not going to... They are being shysty, but they don't want to pay that dedicated rate. They don't want to pay that. They really don't want to pay you at all. If they can get you to take the load for $0 a mile, they'll get you to take it. But they don't want to pay that dedicated rate. That's why usually when they come on the phone, especially TQL, first thing they'll say to you is, hey, I got this partial. Do you know it's a partial? They'll say partial like three or four times during the negotiation process. So brokers play games a lot. And a lot of people have mixed opinions about, well, you guys saw the rate con, so you guys should already know. 8 a.m. It has an 8 a.m. appointment on Friday. It should be no discussion. No matter what the broker said, you guys know. Okay, fine, carrier. That's good. There was a lot of non cdl guys that told me that. I'm not hating on non cdl guys, but it's a lot of people I feel like who don't have enough information. These brokers play games with you. Are you going to sit here and take the games, or are you going to give a fight back? Are you going to give a fight back? Now, my dad said he didn't know. I didn't know. I'm just a driver. I didn't know. And I do not get the Raycon. I mean, I get the Raycon if I ask for it, but I only get is the, because it's my family. I understand. I only get the the, the pickup location and the, the drop-off location. That's all that I get. I don't get no Raycon unless I go to the shipper and the shipper says, um, do you have the Raycon with the proof of, um, what you call it, the reference number or the POD or anything like that? Then I'll ask for the Raycon and they'll send me the Raycon and I'll get the information that I need off the piece of paper. But other than that, I don't have to do all that because it's my family. So I understand that. Okay, look. This is going, this is picking up here Friday. And no, it's picking up here Wednesday. And I'm going to drop this off probably Monday because it's a partial. A partial means part of your trailer. It's not taking up your whole trailer. So I already know my dad is not going to book 20 feet of space on a freaking 53 foot step deck and let me drive all the way across the country with only $3,000. He's not going to do that. I know for, I know for real, my dad is going to book me two or three more partials to put on his trailer so that I can head down over there. So a lot of people have mixed feelings about that, man. And that was a lot. That was a big issue on Instagram, just discussing that. But it wasn't really an issue. It was something good to talk about because a lot of people don't know. A lot of people really don't know. It's like, bro, these brokers play games. They play games. It's only right for you to play games back with them. You're going to sit there and be a nice guy all day and lose? Nice guys finish last. They do. They finish last. But other than that, I'm here in the snowy mountains of New York, um, right here outside of Albany. Gonna go in and get rolling. Well, not rolling, excuse me. We're gonna ahead and shut it down for the night. We're done for the night. I'm gonna move my truck back over here to the other side so nobody can park next to me on my right side. And we're done for the night, man. I thank you guys for tuning into the video. I hope you guys enjoyed on this beautiful Sunday or whatever day you decide to watch the video because these are for the people who really watched it on Sunday and got my notifications. If you don't have my notifications on, you're tripping. It's a gray bell. Well, it's not highlighted gray right now, but I think it's down here. It's a bell down there. And if you, if you tap the bell, it's gray. And if you hit the bell, you'll get the notifications when I drop videos. So that way you'll know ahead of time before anybody else who doesn't have the notifications on. Also, if you don't have the notifications on, that means you're probably not subscribed. So if you don't want to turn notifications on, at least you can do a subscribe. That's what I'm saying. At least you can do a subscribe. You know what I mean? I got this nice, beautiful red Peterbilt. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to flex here. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to flex. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But other than that, I'm going to shut down for the night. My feet are getting cold. I love y'all. And if you're not subscribed to me yet, I still love you too. Peace. Hey, counting these commas, we run it up. I love these hoes that won't come with us. Sipping that dirty, she get her sloppy. Staying high, now she living the dreams. On the pants, Magello on me. Jolly Ranchers mix it up with the lean. Johnny Dang, all my diamonds on fleek. Pop me a perk, cause she think I'm a geek.